All right, she was talking about moments. And this is for me, this is one of them for me. This is one of them for me. This is, all I can say is wow. I look at, look at this audience and I say wow. <sighs> well, as you mentioned, my name is Darnell Barton. You know, at, one point, at a point in my life, there was a time that I didn't like saying that. Who's a, who, who does that? Who doesn't like their own name? There was a point in time in my life where I didn't. Uh, where do I start? On October 18th, 2013, normal day at work. I, um, it was a normal day. Nothing spectacular happened. There were no shooting stars. It was just a regular day. Actually, it was a Friday. And it was about 4 o'clock, so I was ready to go home, get my weekend started. And uh, I have a clicker, and it's not going to go. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, did it start? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's not, again, with the grand finale in the beginning. All right, well, that's what happened. Um, I got the opportunity. I was blessed with the opportunity to stop a young lady from taking her own life. And that opportunity has afforded me a lot. I get the opportunity to travel across the country and inspire people, motivate people, and shed light on emotional issues, health, uh, mental health issues, and things of that nature as a now uh, mental health advocate. But, um, and I also got the opportunity to, to do some talk shows and things like that. Not Ellen, I was a little upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the questions I got asked a lot is why? Why would you do that? Why would you risk your life and your livelihood for a stranger? <sighs> so to, to answer that, I got to take you back a little bit, about four years. And if this were like a sitcom or something, there'd be wavy lines going by because this is a flashback. <laughs> Life was life. Life was, life was being life. You know what? We all know what that means. Life was doing what life does. And I was at a different place. I didn't have the job that I have now. I, it was difficult. It was a difficult period. It was a dark period in my life. And so I, I too had to wrestle with some depression, some suicidal thoughts. And one particular day, as it was just too much. You know what I mean? Just. Stuff going on at the house, married, so you know, stuff in your marriage is you know, not right. Husbands understand that it's completely your fault. <laughs> only, only the ladies laughed. I don't know if I heard that. Uh, and so there was, there was just a lot going on. I got home from work and it was a rough day and I found myself sitting on the edge of my bed with my firearm in one hand and my Bible in the other. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, what am I going to do? I don't know what I was going to do. So I cried out for help, and the response that I got back was, purpose. You have a purpose. And hearing that and getting that rescued me that day. It rescued me that day. And so ever since then, I was pumped up, I was, I was on fire, 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 I was on fire. Fast forward four years, three and a half, four years, to October 18th. Still on fire, but kind of feeling like on fire on the sideline. <laughs> Got a better job than I had four years ago, so that was okay. But I was just doing my, I was, I was doing my everyday. I was doing life. Job, stuff was getting a little, stuff was better. But I was on the sidelines. I wasn't participating. Until one day, I'm driving up Elmwood Avenue, Buffalo, New York. Friday night. They actually, they're getting ready to close the street down because they're going to have a big old party. Who does that? Who has a party in the middle of the street on a Friday night during rush hour? But they were. And uh, I see this young lady. 
And uh, part of me said, don't stop. You got a job to do. Don't stop. You got a job to do. You got to get downtown. They get ready to close this street off, and you got a job to do. These folks want to get home. I had I just left the high school. They were not bad kids. But it's Friday. And they're high school kids. <laughs> so I've got a lot on my mind. I'm rushing, trying to hurry up and get downtown. But then I see this young lady. I didn't think it was real. Thought it was maybe, you know, there was a university right nearby, so maybe it was a, you know, a, a prank or something. And no, but it was real. So I stopped the bus and I counseled with the young let's see, let's see where this goes, where this takes us. Counseled with the young lady. And uh, if you go back a slide, you see us sitting on the ground, we're talking. The, the authorities come and she gets the help she needs. So I go back to the original question, well, why would you do that? Why risk it all for a stranger? Why would you save her? My answer to you was this, I didn't. That young lady saved me. I was doing life. I wasn't walking towards my purpose. That redirected me. We say, well, Darnell, how do you know what your purpose is? I'm standing here today. Thank you.